co-host and one of you hosts. All right. Angela, I've started the recording as you requested. Beautiful. Thanks. Welcome, everyone. This is the meeting of the Cultural Council. We're waiting to make quorum. There will not be any votes taken until they get to quorum. But at this time, you can go ahead and discuss and voice opinions on matters on the agenda. Thanks, Angela. Um, and uh, we'll say we're holding this meeting via remote means, um, you know, thanks to the uh, governor's ongoing extension of the, of the COVID order. Um, and, you know, there's no in-person attendance, but members of the public can access this via Zoom. Um, this was publicly posted and we don't have any attendees in the waiting room right now. Um, but the recording will be made available on the town's YouTube channel shortly after the meeting. Um, so why don't we go ahead and check audio and, and I, we've heard from everybody, but Rachel, if you could just do it once for the recording. Yes, I'm here. And Christy. Hi, I'm here. And Julie. Hi, I'm here. <laughs> and I'm here as well. Um, and we have Angela for the moment. Yeah. Our staff liaison. Um, okay, so let me just, I'll pull up the, the agenda that we posted. Um, if you just give me a moment. Okay, so we don't have any minutes to approve. Um, we don't have any members of the public. So the next item is a membership update, um, which has just been a standing item for us because we do need to recruit. And um, Angela, that would be a question, I guess, for you is, is are, we, um, are we able to pull together some interviews to try to replenish our membership? Absolutely. And you've had a few applicants. So now that I know that you're having trouble reaching for them, then let's push this forward and try and get it done. I think yeah. because you had such high membership level, we were going to try and wait until that cycle that gets you ready for the next fiscal year. We were going to try and wait until, you know, the June cycle. But now that I'm here and I'm witnessing this, let's let's try and fill that spot. Yeah, I'd, I'd like you to email us a list of folks. There was someone in particular, you know, um, mm -hmm. that I thought was applying um, mm -hmm. really the next fiscal year. Yeah, I think you've had a handful of new applicants since New Year's. So uh, I'm happy to pull that Thank list you. together tomorrow. Sure. Great. And as always, um, Christy, Rachel, and and I speak, for my, I speak to myself too. You know, we want to keep on um, thinking about who might be good prospective candidates for for the council. Um, okay, so so grants update. So we have one, as I mentioned, we have one particular um, request that that merits some discussion. Um, but before we get into that one, I will just I want to kind of give kudos to Julianne on the public meeting for setting up the Adobe Acrobat um, uh, e-signature platform. Um, I just can't speak highly enough of how much paper paper and and headache this has saved. I mean, the amount of time that it takes for grantees to print things, sign them, bring them to the Jones, put them in the mailbox. Angela has to collect them from town hall. We have to get them from the library. All that entire process was hours upon hours of just very, very rote work. And um, Julianne has, we work closely with Holly in the treasurer's office and, but Julianne's done all the, all the heavy lifting of setting up the technology. So it's now, um, it's not entirely digital. Of course, folks have the option to print it and sign it if they'd rather, but there's no reason to. It's entirely digital. They um, do not have that option. So. We took that away. It's a digital application process via the MCC, and we've moved to an all digital process. And okay. we are not, uh, everything is to be turned into us for the final grant report via email. Okay. And they agreed to it when they signed uh, all the digital paperwork. So we're good. Okay. So it's an entirely, you heard it here first, it's an entirely digital process um, and it has really streamlined things quite a bit. So I'll say that. And then Julian, I don't know, as the kind of acting treasurer, do you want to speak to the overall grants process? How many have we, you know, I mean, are, have we seen everybody come in now? What, how many are, are left outstanding? Do you know? I, I have not been able to prepare for this meeting. We're in a, a huge push at work and I have been nonstop around the clock. So I'm I'm sorry. It is it is nearly uh nearly done. Um just just about everybody in and accounted for. Um 
it, it you know at most be a handful at this point. So the the there was also a prompting reminder um, system that was put in place with the the digital signing process. So that really helped. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't see a tracker. So um, so then why don't we go to the to the matter of substance um, and. You can the email thread really lays it all out for you, but I'll just I'll just speak to it in case you haven't had a chance to read back through it. Um, the ancestral, so so we had we had two large grants this year, um, which which supported um, black black liberation specifically. Um, the Still We Rise Black Celebration Series we funded at um, three thousand dollars, which was our largest single grant of the year um and then we had juneteenth so well juneteenth is an amherst cinema um specific event which we fund funded at um fifteen hundred dollars and then we we funded ancestral bridges and you know if, if you're if you're sort of following anything in amherst you know that ancestral bridges has been uh, a real sort of national and international highlight for the town. Um, it's the work of Anika Lopes primarily uh, looking at um, her, her, mainly her family roots, but but um, the 54th Regiment, Black soldiers in the Civil War, um, and really just sort of the the incredible legacy of um, Black citizenship in, in Amherst. And so Ancestral Bridges came in with a, a pretty broad application for called Reclaiming Our Narrative, I'm just looking at the spreadsheet now, reclaiming our narrative. Um, and it was a $2,000 award. So in our really second or third tier of, of most, you know, high, high cost awards. And um, I don't have the full application in front of me. So what are you looking for? They requested 17760 dollars for the total amount of uh grant award from us. Um, I just remember because of the the cashy, uh, mm -hmm. seventeen seventy six. But yeah, so we we granted two thousand of that to them. Is that what you're right. looking for? No, uh, but thank what you. Looking for, um, I know. No, that's fine. I, I was actually looking for the grant proposal itself, which is which Angela has really helpfully put everything on the website. And I have to confess, I was I was skeptical of this, but you know, you've redacted it in such a way that it it really I think serves a great purpose. So kudos and thank you for doing that um so reclaiming our narrative the grant proposal itself um i can share my screen i'm do, do you, oh i i can't but if i could share my screen i would pull up the grant proposal because the first request in that email thread was actually to remove the 1776 reference um in the proposal so i think there's maybe a miscommunication internally um and uh, Julianne, would you give me, thank you, or would somebody give me the privileges to share? Uh, uh, let me see. I'm the co-host now. Okay. You're all set. Sorry about thank that. You. No, no problem. Thank you. Um, so here is their original application. And I'm just going to run down to the... Um, so, Ju so Juneteenth was, was slated to be their first program. So that 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 is already in the application, um, and it's a broad overview and it's a broad range of activities that they are really seeking to do, um, and so the proposed program. Just take a second. Let's read that if, if folks can see it. It's very ambitious. I would say storytelling and narr narrative mandate that they're trying to take on. Um, start with a kickoff, you know, regarding um, a kickoff on, on Juneteenth. And then more specifics regarding the activity, um, documenting and broadcasting the appropriated and erased contributions of Black and Indigenous and Amherst. Um, led by Anika Lopes uh, and her family. I, I'm just gonna get down to the budget section here, if you don't mind. 
So we gave them 2000 and you can see the accounting that gets to 1776, 17,760. Um, stipends for storytellers, elders and in intergenerational stories, intern stipends and oversight, um, and then archival and, and other technical costs. That's how they got to 17,760. Um, a Juneteenth event that cost $15,000 um this is a pretty well known event and actually Angela might speak to it too this this is a a town walk that they take to the tablets and I should have said that at the outset they're most known for the civil war tablets that are at the bangs currently um and I I'm embarrassed to say I've, I've had it on my calendar the past couple of years and I have not actually done the full walk but I I know um, several members of this group pretty well, and and you know it's it really is an amazing work, and the tablets are amazing. Um, but the Juneteenth event to the tablets is is sort of the centerpiece of their grant application, I would say, in terms of in terms of activities that they're proposing. So thanks for humoring me on that. Um, that's the background, and then you you see from the email thread that they they declined the grant. They got the letter. It was for 2000 when they had requested 17,000 and change. And then they declined the grant sort of outright without any real explanation. Um, and then the turnaround was just a matter of maybe two or three weeks. I, I'd have to look at the emails, but you know, it was just, it was just a week or two, a short period of time, less than a month. They turned around and they said, can we, can we apply this money for, um, for Juneteenth only essentially? So that's, those are the facts as I understand. <laughs> um, Julianne, I don't know if you want to kind of. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to, to add to that, that um, I, the way I read the brief email and, and you know, we do have a amendment form, you know, that others fill out when things get this, this complex, but I don't want to suggest that they do that if we're not going to, to really seriously look to move forward with it. But they asked if the way I read it, if we could just hand that those funds off as a, in addition to the Juneteenth event as to give them more. And the thing that I don't understand about that is kind of the, that's not what it says the, though. I'm, I'm sorry. From the fiscal point of view, how do we just give funds to an event when we don't have all the criteria that they need to meet in the final grant report? Like I, I, um, it's kind of like saying, oh, well, to be more specific, like what if it was, well, just give it to Amherst Cinema instead. Like, But, but Julie, it doesn't say that. So I, I want to pause you there because it, do, it doesn't say what, what I think you're saying it says. Let me let me reread it. But it, it, it didn't sound to me like they were going to, I, I don't know. It, I just, I don't necessarily have enough inf information. It wasn't like there's a specific thing that we're going to do for Juneteenth and we want to apply this $2,000 to that specific thing for Juneteenth. It was, and, and very vague to me as to who was getting the funds. It sounded like it was to be given to someone else. It wasn't like, can we still receive these funds, but it, can you give them to June 19th? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I get think, the impression I, I, Christy wants to say something. Okay. Yeah. Let me just, I, 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 having read the application through, I think they want to just do their Juneteenth part. That's, that's what I think it says, but, but Christy, didn't they, didn't they, were, didn't they refuse the money? Wait a minute, did I? They, they they did. They they flat out said thanks, but no thanks. And then the exact words I'm reading in the the email was, "Could you please reallocate the two thousand to others, and take our proposal off the website?" That was one part. And then they came back and said, um, "If you if you might allow us to use the grant." you approve for Juneteenth programs, including the gospel choir and storytelling. For, for the, the July 4th. Yeah. But they already refused the money. It's like, I don't know. It just seems like it, it uh, it just seems very confusing. It seems like it's a different project. It seems like, you know, this is sort of at the last minute. And I don't know. It just, 
I mean, um, administratively, I would be like, no, 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 no. This is terrible precedent because then you have people coming back. Wait, 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 wait. I've got another, you know, it's like you got to stop it at some point and say, you made a proposal. We offered you this. You said no. Great. If you want it next year, apply again. Like, is there some is there some reason that we have to do this this year? You know, like the money has to go this year. So, Christy, they, I, I just want to speak to this for a second. So so having looked at the grant application more closely just now. Wait a minute, which grant application? The one that I screen shared with you a minute ago. Yeah, but sorry, just is that the original? That was the original yes. grant application. Okay. Yep. Yep. But so they ha said, having looked, they said having we don't looked want at the, the money. Having looked at the original grant application just now, which was a seventeen thousand dollar request, and right. having read it again more carefully, you know, with this context, the the ancestral bridges Juneteenth event, which is a which is a major undertaking, is clearly described in their original application, which we approved. Now. Some somewhere along, I, I I don't disagree. The confuse this has been very confusing communication. Um, somewhere along the line, they said, you know what, that's not enough. We don't want it. That's not enough money. We don't want it. And okay. that was uh, we accepted that. We said that's fine. We have not taken any administrative action with those funds. We are going to. You know, the, the intent is certainly right. to do so. And I and I don't disagree that you know a, a decision is a decision, and you know, and and that's how it should go. That being said, you know, this is a we're, we are focused on public benefit and not so much on, you know, that that's our focus. Um, and when I look at this, what I connect what I connected reading it through now together is, you know, here is here is Ancestral Bridges having taken a second look at their grant application and the funding that we've given them or we, we had given them approved and then and then said, well, you know, they're not giving us the amount to run our full $17,000 programming, but we shouldn't say no to this amount that's going to let us fund our Juneteenth programming. So my my initial reaction, to be honest, is slightly different than, than what y'all are talking about. My initial reaction was we're already funding Juneteenth on the common in a couple of different ways. We have Amherst Cinema. Uh, we actually applied for and got a festivals and projects grant for the town's Juneteenth activity. But Ancestral Bridges is a nonprofit, standalone, separate from the town. You know, they are but but they're as I said nationally internationally you know very well respected, and they have their own Juneteenth activity, which is the you know which includes the walk to the the, the walk that ends at the um, tablets. So when I read this, you know, had they not said we're giving this money back on January eighteenth, we I would have said of course you can use it for the for your Juneteenth activity, of course you can. That's that's literally in your original application. We gave you about seven percent of what you asked for and so you can use that seven percent however you want so to me the issue is do we give them a mulligan on this declination of the grant and that's that's a big dewey that's a big f it does it does seem like um what we're gonna say um where's my brain um it's it wouldn't have been as simple still they still would have had to have done a, an amendment request to say we're not doing the whole thing but we'd like to still keep the funds can we amend it to just do this one part and and it's you well can't. they 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 are required to produce the event as described in the application yeah. and this is just a part of it and it's a wonderful part of it and it is something that if they'd come to us for just that we probably would have supported it but but at this point they couldn't accept the grant funds and only do that one part they would still by our requirements have to amend um yeah christy okay a couple things did let me just ask get some more information did anyone else reject the funding has anyone Not else this year but it, it's, it's pretty it? common it's pretty common okay yeah, it, it has if happened yes yeah. if that's the case that people reject the funding then we must go to every one of those people and ask them, would they like to reamend? Would they like to amend their proposal? Because you can't be, this is not something which is presented to our applicants. Like, oh, if you don't like it, come back with a new idea and we'll, we'll like give you the money for that. So like talk about equity, diversity and inclusion. 
you are privileging one group because we happen to like them and we think this is good and it's positive and it's outreach and they're nationally recognized. I mean, that is not what we are about. We're not the NEH. We're about equity across all the applications. I, I think this is, the, this is the kind of thing that gets you front page above the fold on the Hampshire Gazette. This is about backhand dealing, making, you know, situations to work for people that you like. And yeah. that is just like, that is not, it's not professional. It's not, it's probably not legal because the application, there is a procedure for revising. And I mean, this is really the kind of thing that sends me writing a letter to the Hampshire Gazette. I mean, I have to say, guys, I find this just, if there was a reason why it had to be this year, like an emergency thing, you know, if we don't do it this year, it's not going to work. I could see if we had a big court, you know, but I just, Matt, I think this is like, this is the recipe for a disaster, for like a professional disaster. And I just, I will absolutely go on the record. I mean, this is, I feel like the same thing we were up against with the school. This is okay. not about our personal opinion. This is about what are our procedures and following the procedures. And then, so there's nothing I mean, these are our neighbors, but the point is we are supposed to not deal with favorites. So and to I speak just to procedure, Christy, sorry to interrupt, but to speak to procedure, I I question that Angela set us down the path of not having a quorum and discussing because this is getting to being a lot like deliberation. And I didn't think it was appropriate for us to discuss the merits of something to this extent. You know, I, I, I feel like this is an inappropriate public meeting that's being recorded and now exactly. that's out there. And I really, exactly. you know, um, this is, I didn't want to get really, into this conversation without even a be, We should not be discussing this. We should not be even discussing this. We have procedures. We have deadlines when things are due. It's March. We're in March. The grant information was sent out six weeks ago. You know, we're, I, I, this is just, if you want to go back to everybody who has refused funding and say, oh, by the way, you can come up with a new idea now. I, you can't do that. I, I just- well, We do I permit, mean, really we do permit that people, once they have signed and even accepted the funds, that if there's a change, it's they are required to come back when they change it for an amendment. And if, if it doesn't meet, the criteria that we're required to follow for an amendment, then they are re required to return those right. funds. Now, as Matt said, the MCC at the state level has made it easier for simple change of date venue. This I mean, is life not happens. A simple. Yeah. This is not um, a simple. It's a new proposal. I'm sorry, just because it no, deals with I, black I, I, people I, in Amherst is not reason to lump them all together. I mean, that's wrong and racist and to say, well, they proposed this thing and now we're going to come up with something else that's by the same group around the same issue. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm going to I'm going to pause for a second because I, I can tell that, that you both have a strong feeling of no. And let's let's end. It's, uh, it's so I the procedure hear from part, Matt. And I, I frankly feel very strongly as, as the host of this meeting that this wasn't simply putting information out there for people to think we're now into active deliberation and discussion and weighing the merits of something. And this is outside of the way that we are allowed to, to operate. And it has nothing to do about how I would vote. It's just that we are not allowed to operate this way in our capacity. We, we can we can have a discussion without a quorum. We, we may have a discussion without a quorum. We can. Well, I can't put it to a vote and if like everybody's comfortable Rachel. with having this discussion. But I know that from my sense of the level of of uh, evaluation of of possibly giving funds to someone. This is beyond any topic of conversation that I would have any other time of the year. So I I I really would like to to move to con to conclude this meeting um, until we can we can have a quorum to to address it. And we, Rachel, I, I, yeah, if you would like to say something, please. I'll all I was going to say is that looking at that 
email chain, it seemed clear to me that they already rejected the funds. They didn't want the money. So mm -hmm. to me, that was the end of the story. And to have come back and, um, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's something that should even be entertained. The you know the discussion. So the fact that, I mean, we're not, we're not going to be voting on any decision, anyway. But I think we're here having this, this uh, you know, discussion. Or for me, that it, it seems pretty clear cut that they already didn't want the money, and that should be the end of it. That's yeah, I mean, and so I mean, that's simplistic interpretation, but um. But because what, you know, what, all, what what you said um, about people like grantees having the option of coming back to us and saying, um, we want to modify this or that or the other about our project. But that's um, with the understanding that they accepted the, the, the grant. They didn't they didn't reject it and then come back and then, you know, ask us for something. So I think that based on their um initial decision, I don't know if there's even a point to have a conversation about it, to be honest. I mean, yeah, I, it's, it's, Rachel, it's I don't, procedural, I don't, procedural okay. as well. So go ahead. Just let me know when you're done. I, I, I don't think, I don't think it's simplistic at all. I think that's the only, you know, that, that's a very um, straightforward point, which is they rejected it. And so if we simply want to hold them to their word on rejecting it, you know, knowing that internally, we have not actually done anything with the funds other than acknowledge their rejection. That, that's market. not the point. And that's, excuse me? Well, that's not the point. I mean, the point is we have a set of rules and procedures that we must follow fairly for everybody. And we're talking about breaking those rules and not applying them fairly. Like if we broke the rule and said, oh, we made some huge procedural error, we're going to go back and send out a new email to all the grant people. But we're not saying that. We're talking about sing singling out someone who you know, had the initiative to ask. And I think one writes a very nice email and says, this sounds like a wonderful idea. We hope you'll put in a grant for this next year. Okay, yeah. can I finish my point though? I, you know, I mean, I, I the rule, whichever rule you're, you're speaking to, you know, I think there is a clear, they said we declined the funds. So that, to me, that is the point. And I, I understand you don't think that's the point. I agree with Rachel that that is the point that, that they said we declined yeah, the funds. I do. I do think that's the point. I think okay, but I, okay. I just I think it all the way down that we have to we have rules, we have quorum rules, we have whatever. That gives us protection as it should as members of the committee. I don't want to be I don't want to be Okay. Yeah. I don't want to be in the paper. Can I I, if Christy, if you would just please give me a minute to finish my thought. Is that okay or, or should we just end? I, I really think that we sh we should end because I really don't think that we should be having this discussion. I I feel very strongly about that, and we, you know, and I I can't bring it to a vote. If I had to quorum, I would bring it to a vote to say, <laughs> are are we within our, you know, um, you know, correct capacity and what we've been appointed to do to have this discussion? But I can't even bring it to a vote, so. We're continuing and uh, okay. Okay. So, um, All right. So, so for the recording, we can end now, and I won't. I will not finish my thought. For the okay. report, it's it it's it's okay it because the, to have these thoughts, we should be having them in a quorum, because you, you, this is an attempt to move towards a decision of which we can't vote, but we're supposed to do that with a quorum. So, I I know that you have good intentions and just, you know, really want to do right by folks, but we we are outside of how we are supposed to operate. So I'd, I'd like to end the recording and, and revisit this when we do have a quorum and can properly address it. And we'll be happy to hear all your thoughts then. Okay. I just want to say, I mean, I've heard out a lot of, a lot of thoughts from, from both of you. I mean, you know, I all think the, way the fact is that none of us wanted to share our thoughts about this because we shouldn't be sharing our thoughts about it. And then Julianne, Why do we have to continue to? A public body can meet without a quorum. It's okay. We're not breaking any rules. We're not breaking any laws. It's fine to have this conversation. That is not how I understand it because it. it I just. I would really like to end this, and I'd. I'd respectfully 
you know, like your agreement that, that we can end the recording and end the meeting and pick this up when we have a quorum, please. Angela is holding, Angela opened this meeting because, you know, knowing we didn't have a quorum because we can discuss it. So Angela I, I'm opened willing the to meeting end saying, because yeah, you're asking me to. Excuse me, but, Matt, Matt, she opened the meeting saying it would be a good record of the attempt to follow through on a scheduled meeting. And that we wouldn't didn't make quorum and therefore we would end it. And we all were like, oh, well, that makes sense. But not that we would get into discussions and deliberation of of matters that would then later be voted on when we don't have a quorum and we shouldn't be discussing it. So uh, uh, I'd okay. like to. It'll be good to get a clarification from her because we've we've done this before where we've we've had meetings without quorum and not had votes. So it'd be good to get a clarification for her on that front. I'm I'm happy to end the discussion now. I can tell that folks folks don't want to have this conversation right now. Uh, I wish you all a good night. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Christy. Enjoy Paris. Thank you, Rachel. Take care. Bye. Julie.